A big thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Imagine a world where you're living as the best version of yourself. You're where you want to be mentally, and any flicker of self-doubt rushes off you like a light breeze. If you knew achieving this version of yourself was possible, wouldn't you jump at the chance? Well, I would, and that's why I'm genuinely excited to partner with a company that's all about the continuous journey of personal development through therapy. Introducing BetterHelp. BetterHelp is a user-friendly online platform with a crucial goal, making therapy accessible and affordable for everyone. With a network of licensed therapists committed to guiding you toward your best self. The entirely online experience eliminates concerns about waiting rooms and geo restrictions. Getting started is simple. Just answer a few questions and BetterHelp will match you with a therapist tailored to your needs, often within 48 hours. After that, it's up to you as to how you want to communicate with your therapist. You could talk over the phone, through video chats, or even messaging. So the question is, are you finally ready to work on becoming the best version of yourself? Click the link in the description or hop on over to betterhelp.com slash besteverfood to get 10% off your first month. And here's the best part. If you want to change your therapist for any reason at all, you can do it with no fee and no insurance headaches. It's time to take control of your mental health. Head on over to betterhelp.com slash besteverfood. And now on to the show. This is about as weird as Marilyn gets right oh, here. What? It feels so creepy. In this video. Oh, that's a massive one. You'll discover the USA's impressive crabbing industry at work. Whoa. Whoa. An all attempt to eat an entire crab, shell and all. I've never eaten a whole crab like this in every bite is magic. But first, let's back up. Our East Coast cross-country seafood journey continues as we leave New York City's massive Fulton Fish Market and head southward to Maryland. Here, blue crabs are a point of pride and a huge part of this state's culinary identity. You can eat crab cakes all year round, but if your friend likes you, they will have a crab feast with you. These frigid waters promote fat growth in the crabs, resulting in a rich, decadent bite. But getting your hands on those decadent crabs is not so easy. Ah! Ah! Just kidding. My finger was never in there. Ha ah! <laughs> Today, I'm on a mission to follow the journey of a Maryland blue crab from the ocean floor. You know anybody who's ever lost a finger? Uh, pretty close. To the processing facility. How do you know if there's any shell in there? What, do you have like a... An x-ray? And to its final destination, being served up in a sandwich with legs at a local eatery. This is a behemoth right here. It's got legs sticking out. I love it. And it all starts right here on the water. Now, when I first was told I was going to be meeting crab men, I pictured this. Turns out they're just normal humans who catch crabs. But that's cool too. We'll be hopping on CJ's boat in just a moment. Just off the coast here, he has over 1,500 pots set ready to trap them crabs. Let's pull them up and see what we find. Right now, we're jumping aboard the floating vessel known as Miss Paula with 26-year crabbing veteran CJ. His daily routine revolves around pulling up hundreds of traps and hoping for the best. Alongside him, Luke McFadden, a young buck with only eight years in the crabbing game. Luke, nice, nice to meet, meet you. you. CJ, how many days a week are we out here? So I haul gear usually four to five days a week. The crabs don't take a day off. Do you take a day off? I do. <laughs> We are working to deeper water because this is the best time to catch crabs in Maryland. These crabs are moving to deeper water to hibernate for the winter. Blue crabs are native to the waters of the Western Atlantic Ocean and the Gulf of Mexico. And more than one third of the USA's blue crab comes from the Chesapeake Bay, the largest estuary in the country. Here, the interplay of salt and fresh water create the ideal conditions for the animals we're after. Every year, during peak season, from April to the end of November, crabbers like CJ and Luke do their best to cash in. Boom! Two crabs! He takes a trap, he shakes it out, the crabs fall down, add some bait, and then that is going to go to the side. Just like lobsters in Maine, crabs here are caught using traps, also called pots. These pots are designed to make it easy for crabs to enter and not so easy for them to escape. A bait box or pouch is placed inside the trap to lure them in. These crabs are extremely picky. They want fresh chicken necks, they want fresh fish, they want the best. Chicken necks is part of their natural diet. It makes sense. <laughs> Up to 25 traps are submerged in the water and connected to a line. It's like a free meal for the crabs, but with a little bit of a catch. And a catch is exactly what we're after. Look at these crabs. Hot spot. There we go. Oh my god, this thing is gigantic. Holy cow. Yeah, Look at this dude. Yeah. Oh, nothing. You got to hold him just like that. If your fingers are too far underneath, he'll get a hold of you. Oh. You ever get pinched? All, All the, the time. time, every day. <laughs> you know, I've seen so much seafood around the world, mostly in Asia, and I've seen so little in my own country. And just the shape of the carapace, how it juts out like some kind of ancient Mongolian warrior wearing a helmet. 
The claws, the colors, they're really beautiful. Is this a male or a female? That's a male crab. You can tell it looks like the Washington Monument. The females have the Capitol Dome. Honestly, if that is the G version, it just looks like a penis. That's what I say. It's the Washington Monument and the Capitol Dome. Kid-friendly show. In a good day this time of year, how many crabs are you pulling up? It's more than a couple, less than a few. For tax reasons, you don't want to say how many? <laughs> <laughs> Unlike other fisheries negatively affected by climate change, blue crabs are throwing a shell of a party in the warmer waters, with better breeding conditions and all. But the crabbers still need to play it cool with regulations to keep the crabs sustainable for the long run. In Maryland, everything is regulated. In the beginning of the season, it's a five inch male crab limit. A crab under five and a quarter inches right now is not legal. Unless it's a peeler crab, it's only got to be three and a half inches. What is a peeler crab? Does that mean it's about to shed? Yes, so it's going to show sign on its second swim fin that that crab's going to shed within a couple days. Once checked, the unqualified crab gets a VIP return ticket to the ocean floor. Peeler crabs are brought to CJ's own processing facility, which we'll soon see. What? It feels so creepy. Larger crabs hit the market as big shots, sold whole and ready to impress. Meanwhile, the more humble-sized crabs are sent to a processing facility where their meat is extracted. Chesapeake brand seafood sends about 6,000 crabs into containers chock full of oceanic delights every single day. First, piles of crabs are cooked all the way through. Once boiled, the succulent treasure within is meticulously extracted by the hands of skilled pickers. Finally, the meat morsels are sorted by grade, then packaged, shipped, and prepared to undertake a gastronomic journey all around the USA. But if you find yourself in the crab utopia that is Maryland, it would be a culinary transgression not to savor the state's quintessential delight, the crab cake. And what better way to elevate the experience than by enjoying it on a boat with the captain? Let me tell you a sad story. When I was 22, I had almost no money. I went to the Rainforest Cafe. It's an independent restaurant. I'm not sure if you've heard of it. <laughs> and I ordered the crab cakes, and then they, I paid, I don't know, $25. So it was a lot of money back then. And it just was a tiny bread disc with maybe the sole of a crab. I'm not even sure if any crab meat actually reached the cake. Then this is the opposite. It's big, beautiful, full of big chunks that you can actually see. These are the best crab Crab cakes I think I've ever seen. Crab cakes, they're either packed with flour and fillers or they're made right. Maryland crab cakes are not a bunch of filler. Allow CJ to show you how it's done. First, the base mixture. So we're gonna add the J.O. crab cake mix. We're gonna want exactly half a cup of mayonnaise. Perfect, like a little hot sauce like a little mustard, a little Worcestershire sauce, a little parsley for health. Now, the main dish here, we're using jumbo Maryland crab meat, the best on earth. Once the patties are forged to his exacting standards, they stand ready for the flat top. Oh, it's big and heavy. Guys, let's dig in. Cheers. Oh, man. Oh, delicious. Big chunks of seasoning. And when it's warmed up like that, it really just brings out the flavor of the crab. I'm getting hits of mayonnaise. I'm getting the seasoning. A little bit of the, the wor how do you say it? The worst. Worcestershire. That sauce in there too, but all of it playing beautifully off the crab. The crab meat itself is super tender. It's almost like a fattiness to it. What do you think? I couldn't be more pleased. <laughs> I'm so curious about where this crab ends up because when you're talking about something like lobster, it's a premium product, it's something everybody wants, and so people are taking the time and effort to ship it across the country and across the world. But when it comes to blue crab, I know the meat might make it everywhere, but the crabs themselves, the fresh animal, the creature, while even still alive, where's that getting to? The crabs caught in Maryland in Chesapeake Bay, probably 90 or 95% are eaten in Maryland. They do not leave because demand is that high. So actually we ship a lot of crabs, Louisiana, Texas, North Carolina, South Carolina. A huge portion of their crabs also come to Maryland. So Maryland is just really the live blue crab eating capital of the world. What is it about these blue crabs that people love so much? It really is in a lot of ways like the heart and soul of Maryland. It's like when you come to Maryland, like you gotta try a crab cake. If your friend likes you, they will have a crab feast with you. Mm -hmm. If you come to Maryland, and you don't get to experience a crab feast. You need better friends. Yeah, get better friends. <laughs>
When it comes to pint-sized crabs like these, the task of breaking through their shells for each minuscule morsel of meat can be tedious. I've tried opening up small crabs. I get through the claws. When I get to the body, I just give up. But what if I told you CJ has found a solution? Whoa. Next, we're heading to his house, where I'll eat an entire crab whole, including the shell. Poor guy. He's probably like, what the fuck? I feel everything. <laughs> CJ's house is like a crab laboratory, a crabatory, with cages stacked up high and every corner serving as a different workshop for his crab experiments. Yet the true treasures lie hidden within his garage. CJ, right now we're in your creepy crab laboratory. <laughs> this is where the magic happens. We bring the peelers, the crabs that are very close to molting or shedding their shells. We put them in here, and then when they shed out their shells and turn into soft crabs, you help them out of the shell right into the frying pan. <laughs> the best eating crab you're gonna get. That's what we sell as a soft crab that would be eaten whole. The crab doesn't grow its shell, rather it molts, shedding the old exoskeleton, squeezing its way out, then forming a new one. In a lifetime, a blue crab molts about 20 times. This crab shed last night, and you can see here, the crab can't even hold its claws up. It's so soft that it's just kind of hanging out. This is the most valuable crab for me. These softies can sell for over twice the price of a typical hard shell. That's why CJ undergoes the tedious process of crab sitting. What? It feels so creepy. It's leathery. I've <laughs> never touched a crab like this. Oh, you poor guy. He's looking at me like... Man, if I had any stiffness to my claws, I'd bite you in the finger. But you can't. Wow. That is a new one for me. That's really cool to see. So in this instance, you're going to be eating the entire crab, the claws, the shell, the carapace, everything. Is that right? Yes, you eat everything. We cut the face and the eyes off, the devil, and then the apron. Good. I don't want it looking at me. Yes, it won't be looking at you. CJ's approach to soft shell crab cooking is pure simplicity, treating it much like a premium steak. Onto a hot skillet, it goes with butter and a sprinkle of J.O. seasoning. This is the main event, but before we sink our teeth into that, we're having a full-on crab boil. Just toss today's catch into a giant steamer. Sprinkle it with a dash of J.O. seasoning. Let the fire kick in and you'll know it's feasting time when those crabs blush into a vibrant red hue. This reminds me of what I've experienced in the South when I went to Alabama and they have a crawfish boil and they have just a giant vessel filled with 10,000 crawfish. They put it out all over the table. It's kind of like your version of that. Maybe that's their version of this. Yeah. <laughs> ah, well, well said. Cheers to that. This is a classic Maryland summertime scene right here. There's a pile of crabs. Let's go at it with some friends. Let's get into it. I like starting with the claws. What is the strategy here? I'll just try to break it, you know, on the table. Oh, that, that worked. Wow, this meat looks incredible. It's kind of dark. The claw meat. Oh, delicious, like juicy, it. sweet. Mm, that J.O. seasoning oh, tastes like pepper, oh. tastes like cayenne. Yeah. That's real good. Okay. Now, if I want to get into this body, how would I do that? All right, pick the apron. Like that. The Washington Monument? Yep. Okay. And then you're gonna pull top shell off yep. right there. Yep. That's actually an undeveloped shell, so that crab was gonna shed in the near future. You can eat that, and that is good. Mm, oh yeah. It's really good. Whoa, completely different experience. There. It's briny, salty, super fatty, and even a touch bitter, depending on what's connected to there. So this is the hard shell crab. This is something that's a little bit more familiar to me, even though I've not had it with the seasoning or done up in this way. Incredible, but next. The soft shell crab, a crab that just shed yesterday. It's basically as soft as it can be. The meat, it still has that leathery feel to the outside. It's still flexible. It's very disconcerting. It's got legs. But tantalizing at the same time. Cheers. Whoa. Very different than the crab cakes or the hard crabs. That is so different. So the legs have their own kind of taste, flavor to them, the body itself. This is wild. This is one of the most delicious things I've ever had in my face. I get why you have a super creepy garage now. Absolutely. <laughs> What's wild too is if you eat a hard shell crab like this, I mean the real estate, there's not that much left compared to eating the entire soft shell crab in every bite. 
is magic. It's like juicy. I know that sounds weird, but it's almost like a casing on like a sausage, you know? Yeah, that's a great way to explain it because you take a bite, the skin is kind of tight around the outside, and your teeth break through that, and you get to that juicy core on the inside. They're delicious. That's got to be one of the better eat things come out of this bag. Sure. How often are you doing something like this? This is all potential profit right here. Yes, I, I can't afford to eat my crab. Neither can I. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get high on your own supply of crabs. CJ Softshell crabs become a better value when sold to restaurants, where they can turn into culinary gold. Like here at Ocean Odyssey Crab House, a seafood restaurant that's matched a love for seafood with a sense of adventure with their sandwich, known as Bay on a Bun. The unique thing about this sandwich is it encapsulates uh, the best things that the Bay has to offer from crabs, oysters, and fish. First, we're gonna dredge the fish, a little egg wash, and our seasoned flour. And then the same with the soft crab. And the oysters, we'll go straight into the flour. They're all treated to a nice long fry. Now, it's time for the build. All right, so we have our toasted bun. We'll start with a bed of mixed greens, and we'll stack the catfish, followed by the soft crab, and the oysters. A little of sauce. So this is a tomatillo aioli and Mary Rose sauce, and that is how you make the bay on the bun. This is a massive, a leviathan. It's got legs sticking out, I love it. Joining me, Ocean Odyssey, co-owner Travis. If I'm not mistaken, this is your brainchild. Yeah. It's not just the soft shell inside it. We've got fish, we've got oysters, everything on the bay inside this bun. Let's you go for it. it. Oh yeah. That is a whole different experience. So yesterday I had a soft shell crab that had just shed the night before and then it was pan seared. And it was soft, tender, juicy. I would compare it to a spicy cheddar Johnsonville brat <laughs> that was half filled with <laughs> crab meat. That's my white trash comparison. But this is all fried, so it changes the texture a little bit. Sure, you get that extra crunch. Mm. It's tough to tell in the moment what you're chewing on. There's like some brinier bites that I think must be the oyster. There's some really hot chunks, which I think must be the fish, because it's holding all that heat. But that crab still has that skin on the outside. It's partially crispy, still partially like a sausage skin that snaps as you chew through it. Exactly. Plus you got the sauce, nice and creamy, bringing it all together, and a little bit of vegetables, you know for fiber. That's right. I guess. Need some vitamins in there. Tell me about being a seasonal restaurant, because this is kind of new to me and something that it feels unexpected for the USA, because if anybody has a successful business, people on the outside are like, why isn't a franchise yet? Why don't you have five locations? Why aren't you working 100 Ooh. hours a week? Meanwhile, you shut the doors every winter. We do. We're a crab house. That's a big part of what we are. You know, the crab season is from April until sometimes December, November. Now, that's the harvesting season. So if they're in the Chesapeake Bay, we've got them. If they're not, if they're moving, which they do, or if it's the winter time and they're buried in the mud, we kind of go into a hibernation just like the crabs do. What begins as a small, scuttling marvel of nature transforms into a powerhouse resource, leaving an indelible mark on the state of Maryland. The blue crab isn't just a piece of cultural heritage, drawing in tourists who are eager to savor the state's distinct seafood, but it also serves as an economic gold mine for hardworking locals. You've both been doing this a good chunk of time, and a lot of people, they just see the end product, whether it's at the store or in a restaurant, but they don't really have access to the first step of sourcing these ingredients. So for you guys, what would you say are the biggest challenges that you and other crabmen are facing? Our profit margin has shrunk over the last you know, 20 years since I started doing it because everything has increased exponentially, but the price of crabs has only gone up kind of slowly. I agree. I mean, it's, you know, really it's how much money can you get for what you can catch? Because with a lot of the new regulation coming into play, you're going to hit caps here eventually. And so like the approach I've taken is a little different than most guys. I really just wanted to sell more grabs, you know, so I catch all my own, like CJ, but I sell all my own direct to the customer. For both of you, you both have had this journey on social media, online. Where do you hope that ends up? Like I always say, something for my grandkids to see uh, down the line. They'll get to know what I did. I just saw social media as a really, really good way to build a customer base, but you know, also give an insight into who catches your food, how your food actually gets from where it is to the table, you know, and bridge that kind of gap because it's something that people have no idea, you know, and they don't realize that like in America, there's still a really strong, sustainable, healthy commercial fishing fleet. You know, most people think of fishermen as people that just want to take, take, take and leave nothing behind. But to us, we're dependent on the resource. And so we're the ones that are most interested actually in finding ways to make sure that we can go to work and feed our families.
If you love Indian food, then you're gonna love our new channel, Best Ever Food India. Subscribe now for weekly videos showcasing the most unique street food from around the country. This one uh, has given up. He's not fighting anymore. I can hold it however. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> Definitely not gonna wanna get bit. I'm gonna try it. Ah! Ah! Just kidding. My finger was my finger was never in there. Ha ha. All right, put that in the intro. <laughs> so the average person in here in one day, about how many crabs do you think they're going through? Probably anywhere from like six bushel. Nobody knows what a bushel is except for you. Okay. 60 crabs are in a bushel. Okay, cool. So you gave me an SAT math problem. Yep. <laughs> if Andre has six bushels and each bushel has 60 crabs. So that's almost 500 crabs per day. As you're eating the crabs, you're gonna get more and more seasoning on your hands, mm -hmm. so then you're transferring that with the meat to your... Face? Yeah, face. Yeah, I lost train of thought, sorry. <laughs> you're doing great. The main dish here, we're using jumbo lump. Oh boy, yep. I knew that was going to happen. Can we start from the beginning? <laughs> Cut! <laughs> How do you know someone is productive enough? It's a genuine question. It's kind of a magical place, you know? Santa Claus has his little elves making toys, but I would rather come to this kind of a workshop where you can walk away with a big tub of crab meat. It's a beautiful thing. Clear. CJ, earlier you said that this crab, the Maryland crab, is the best in the world. Why do you say that? Because I caught it. Okay. <laughs> Luke, what do you think? I agree. I mean, it's, you know, right where it came from. You know, we caught it right from our boats, right to, right to the plate. You know what I mean? You I know. just feel like you two might be biased. We may be a little biased. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> Boom! Guys, that is the end of this video, and that is everything you've ever wanted to know about blue crabs here in Maryland. Maryland crabs, best crabs in the world, as voted on by the people of Maryland. I think they're biased. <clears throat> anyway, I thought it was incredible, and I had one of the most unique crab experiences of my life here, having a whole soft shell crab pan seared. It was delicious. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. I want to say thank you to everybody who partook in this video. We had a great time. Otherwise, guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. A peace. All right, walk away all cool and casual. I'm stuck. I'm stuck, help me, <laughs> come me out.